All right. Hey, welcome. Ben Geisler here. Welcome to live stream number two. We are going to focus on a topic that people don't generally pay a lot of attention to, and that is strap keepers or belt keepers. Uh, you know, most people are content to just uh, roll one of these up, butt stitch it or throw a staple in it and go about their merry way. But when you make a nicer belt or a nicer strap, uh, maybe you want to do something uh, a little bit nicer. And I'm going to show you how I do these today. This is going to be uh, skived and overlapped, stitched, and formed. So there's a little bit more to it. Takes 15 or 20 minutes, maybe a little quicker if you uh, pay attention to what you're doing. And uh, I think you'll like the result. So let's go over what we need. Thing number one, uh, you need a cased piece of leather for your keeper. Um, I like to use about eight ounce. It's going to vary based on the type of belt, the size of the belt, whatever. Um, and you're going to case it alongside your belt, right? Uh, if you forget to case this alongside your belt, uh, you pretty much got to go back and case it on its own. And, you know, you lose a bunch of time. So just do it at the same time. It's easy. Okay. Uh, it needs to be the right width uh, or proportion for the belt that you are making. In this case, it's five eighths of an inch wide. Uh, for an inch and a half belt, visually, that's where I want to be. Um, three quarters to me is too chunky, half an inch is too narrow. Um, so five eighths is where I want to be and I want it to be longer than I need it to be. So just cut a piece, set it aside, maybe cut two just in case you mess up your sky. Um, what else are we gonna need? We're gonna need an edge creaser. This is a, uh, a gonf number four edge creaser. It's got a heel on one side and then, uh, you know, an actual crease line here. Um, this company went out of business in 1925, but there are a surprising number of these tools out there in the world. They still work great. Uh, I know Bruce Johnson's got a few. Uh, Dick Levitz has got a few. You see them on eBay here and there. And for belt keepers, you really only need one or two sizes. Some people like a three. I think it's a little bit too narrow. I like a four. Whatever, it's kind of up to personal preference. Uh, you're going to need an edger. Uh, this is a Barry King grooved edger, size zero, uh, which I think is about perfect for eight ounce. Uh, again, it's going to be personal preference. Uh, we're only going to be edging one side of this, and I'll explain that here in a minute. Okay, you're going to need uh, needles and thread. Um, I am using pretty large linen thread for this, and so... Uh, what I do with it is going to be maybe a little bit different than what uh, what you would do. So you need to match your thread and your needles to your project. For me, for belt keepers, I use a uh, a fairly low SPI. I've got a uh, Sewa or a Kyoshinel diamond iron here. It's a uh, say uh, five millimeter, I think. Ah, that can't be right. I think it's a four millimeter. Um, anyway, it'll lay down five stitches uh, in a hit, and that's perfect for me because I'm going to overlap the sky and then sew through it, making sure that it's secure. You know, it's five stitches. You don't need five. You can do, you know, even one if you want to, uh, but you should probably stitch it or double stitch it. Um, you're going to need wax for your thread, a little piece of beeswax. You're going to need needles. Uh, these are uh, Osborne 16 gauge harness needles in about a two and three eighths. Um, a lot of you like John James needles. Uh, John James makes excellent needles. Uh, number two for bigger sizes, number four for smaller sizes. Um, my gripe about John James is that as the needles get bigger, the eye doesn't necessarily get bigger. So in the largest sizes, you know, you don't, you don't get any more room to accommodate larger thread. And that makes it pretty hard to use. So for me, I use the Osbournes. They're fine. Um, if you're not going to use an iron, uh, you'll want an all of one variety or another that matches the SPI you want to do and a way to mark it, whether that's dividers or, uh, you know, whether that's dividers or stitching wheel or whatever you want to do. Um, beyond that, you're going to need a knife uh, or French edger to skive these ends with. And you're going to need a loop stick. You can make these yourself. Um, you can even use a piece of leather if you want, but I like uh, wood. Uh, one, because it won't mark your leather, even if it's veg tan. And two, 
um, you can kind of shape it to your specifications and it's hard enough you can shape your loop around it. Um, the loop, uh, loop iron or loop stick needs to be one and a half of the thickness of your belt. And that's for a lined belt. So if my lined belt is going to be 16 ounces thick, I'm going to want a 24 ounce loop stick, which is what this is, three eighths of an inch. So <clears throat> because that loop is going to wrap under the, the lined, the full thickness of the belt, right? And then the belt's going to come back through it. And uh, you need to make sure that it's snug uh, but not too tight, not too loose. And we'll handle that in just a second. Uh, I think we're ready to go. All right, so step one when you're doing this is you're gonna need to uh, edge crease it. I'm gonna edge crease the whole thing. I don't know how much length I'm gonna use. This is just gonna make things easier for me. So <clears throat> as with a beater in my previous video, you wanna start holding it this way and you're gonna just ride it down the edge and you're gonna establish an initial crease line. You don't want it to you know, go for broke the first time, okay? Now what you'll do is you will crease this in applying successively more pressure until you have the crease that you want. So you know it might take you several passes to get it right. As I said in my previous video though, you're not gonna want to spend a ton of time getting a super hard crease <clears throat> because you're gonna wrap this around a stick, hit it with a hammer, so on and so forth. Some of your crease is gonna come back out. So you're gonna have to introduce that crease back in after it's on the loop stick. So don't go too crazy. You wanna have a defined crease, but you don't wanna have you know, your end game, final boss, very best crease. So, you know, you'll want to just take it, run it down the side here, and introduce more and more pressure until you get that nice bead. So, again, four or five passes, and it will be where we want it to be. Okay, so step one, you're going to want to crease this keeper. And the crease alone is worth the, uh, is worth the price of admission here. Okay, uh, it's gonna give you a finished appearance even if you don't really do anything else. Now that we've done the crease, uh, you know, on this edge, what we're gonna wanna do next is, uh, is knock, the, uh, knock the edge off the bottom with a beveler. If you use a beveler on the top, it takes away uh, some of the distance you have to get your edge crease. And so if you bevel it, you don't get a clean crease. So if you're gonna crease it, don't bevel it. But on the bottom, we're going to take our uh, we're going to take our beveler <clears throat> and just run it down the edge here. Just shave that edge off. So already this thing looks a hundred percent better. Okay, we've got a nice clean bottom. Whoop! My beveler's trying to get away. So we've got a nice clean bottom profile, clean top profile. All of it looks uh, you know warm and fuzzy. So now we're gonna do our initial burnish. I need to grab a damp sponge, which I've got right here. So this doesn't need to be any harder <clears throat> than you're gonna make it on yourself. And the easy way to do it is uh, to use a little bit of white saddle soap, a canvas glove, <clears throat> and a damp sponge. Now you're gonna to wanna to dampen the edges of this. And don't be afraid to get it maybe uh, a little bit wetter than you think it needs, but it should have a, a pretty distinctively damp appearance along the edge. Um, you'll take your saddle soap, you'll wipe a little bit on your glove. This is just some double weave canvas, fairly coarse. And what the saddle soap do is, does is it acts as a, uh, as a lubricant to allow you to not build too much heat. You know, you wanna heat that edge up, and kind of uh, and, and smooth it, but you don't want to burn it. So, without any further ado, uh, I got to take it a little bit easy because this table isn't super uh, sturdy. You want to lay it on the edge of the bench, okay? So it's laid parallel with the bench, and I'm just going to polish along the side with my canvas glove. So, go down one side. 
the other side. You'll flip it. And you'll flip it one more time. And uh, that is all we need for our initial burnish. Uh, I don't know how much definition we're picking up here, but you can see, uh, you know, we're most of the way there. If you want, you can take it, hold the mitten, work through and, uh, and give it a little bit extra. Nothing wrong with that. Um, but just keep in mind that as you sort of pull on this and stretch it, you know, that's going to put stress on that line that you just creased, right? So you've got to go back and clean it up periodically as you work your way through. Um, you know, you've got to establish it before your edge gets rounded off because otherwise it's just a really hard time to do. <clears throat> but as you see, it's evolving already. Now we've got a, uh, now we've got a domed profile, creased edge. Good. <clears throat> the next step, we got to figure out how long this thing needs to be to do what we want it to do. I know that we're going to get a good fit with a three eighths of an inch loop stick. So uh, what that means is that I am going to wrap it around the loop stick. <clears throat> and that's going to overlap. OK, you're going to see an overlap here. Now, I like that overlap to be three quarters of an inch. <clears throat> So what you're going to do is you're going to mark the three quarters of an inch overlap on the top and on the underside piece, right? So I know that it's going to be here, probably there, and then probably there. Okay, so that gives me where to cut it off and where to skive. And you want to make this a little bit small because you're going to hammer this thing or slide this thing on the loop stick and you want a snug fit. Uh, if it ends up being a little bit big, you can still get a good form, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, step one, though, we need to cut this thing off. Grab my handy-dandy piece of polyethylene and my head knife. Trim this side and this side. And now we skive it. So... <clears throat> Skiving this thing, um, what's important here is that we don't over skive. You know, you can always take a less material off and bring it back. Um, you know, it's awfully hard to add material back on. So you're going to skive one side from the top and one side from the bottom so that they overlap and create a continuous edge, right? Go back to our stick here, see where we're at. <clears throat> So when you skive, you want to skive at an angle, a fairly low continuous angle. Um, because you want this to overlap nice and clean and we're going to cement it. So you want a, uh, a feather almost right here, right? So skive the top off, now I got to skive the bottom off. Now you want to make sure that if one of them is going to be long, it's gonna be this one <clears throat> because you want, if you can, you want more showing on the top than the bottom. So you can see here, that's what we're going for, right? Pretty clean job. Um, and now we cement it. Uh, I'm using barge for this uh, out of habit. Water-based glues are, um, probably a better choice if you're worried about toxicity or a better choice in general, just for the environment, everybody, whatever. Um, but for stuff like this, I still use barge. I'm trying to get away from it more and more. Um, toluene's not great for you, uh, despite its amazing smell. So, you know, protect yourself. All right, so I've got barge on here. And the thing with contact cements is that you've got to get them really where they need to be um, <clears throat> before you stick them down. Because when they make contact, they're stuck. So <clears throat> with these, they need to get almost dry to the touch before you, uh, before you go to stick them. And if you start to stick them and then it pulls apart, 
you know, obviously the glue is no good and you got to do it again. So you've got to kind of err on the side of caution, let it sit a little bit long. And then uh, once it's sat a little bit long and it's nice and dry, you stick it. And then once we've got it stuck, we'll put it on the loop stick just far enough that we can get our pricking iron to it. And uh, we'll use the pricking iron and knock our stitching holes and then we can get back to business. So while I wait for that to, uh, while I wait for that to gas off a little bit, I'm gonna get our thread ready. <clears throat> I uh, made myself a exacto knife holder here. Keeps track of my exacto knives and my blades. Um, super handy, actually. Uh, it's one of the many exciting things that you can do with a 3D printer. Uh, anyway, so nothing really too unexpected in terms of preparing this thread. Just gonna lock it on the needle, wax it with beeswax. Um, you can use paraffin wax, you can use edge wax, you can use, you know, any of that stuff, but I like pure beeswax and that's what I'm used to using, so. And depending on how long your thread is, you can always peg your thread in the middle and then flip it around. Um, in this case, I'll just pull it back and forth. Um, as sewing jobs go, you don't necessarily even need to wax this, but uh, we're here, so we'll do it. <clears throat> Cement is almost ready, so I'll have a little coffee and uh, we'll get ready to get this done. Now, you'll notice that I'm going to stamp this keeper with a diamond, and I am, but I'm not going to put the diamond on it until the keeper is formed and on the loop stick. The loop stick provides enough backbone to actually stamp it, and uh, <clears throat> it's way easier to center it on the loop stick than it is to center it on the, you know, a flat piece of leather and then get the loop to go where it goes. So that is why we'll do it this way. <clears throat> now, if you've done a good job with your sky, if you should have, uh, you should have a very smooth transition between the two pieces right here. And if that's true, we'll slide this onto the loop stick. As far as it needs to go. <clears throat> Take our pricking iron. And we want to center our pricking iron over the sky so that we get an even amount of stitches going either way. And uh, we don't want to compromise the quality of the sky by cutting through its edge if you can avoid it. So get it where it's going to be well positioned. And knock a hole in it. By the way, if you're looking for diamond irons, uh, these diamond irons from Rocky Mountain are as good as anything. Um, you know, they're a great value. They're something like $20 for, a, for an iron. And if you sew with diamond irons, they are excellent. Okay, so sewing a loop like this, they actually make a fixture that goes on your, uh, that goes on your stitching horse or whatever so that it will hold this. But, you know, it's kind of fiddly. It's kind of a pain in the butt. You're just gonna get to enjoy it in, in whatever way you can. But, <clears throat> You basically have to hold it and just go for it. Um, I saddle stitch from back to front toward myself. Depending on what it is that you like to do, your process might be a little bit different. Um, everyone has different uh, saddle stitching configurations that work for them. Um, I'm not here to judge your saddle stitching ability, at least not in this video. So <clears throat> our goal here is to just cleanly stitch the backside um, of this keeper. It uh, doesn't take that long. I mean, it's certainly not as fast as stapling it, but you know, you can sleep at night too. So there's that. Um, you know, there's a time and a place for that high volume kind of work on loops and uh, on nicer custom belts is not, uh, is not it.
So that is stitch number five, and then we will flip it the other way. <clears throat> so you can see it's, you know, kind of your, your normal, your normal look there. Um, the big deal here when you're running your stitching the other way is that you've got to pay attention to where your needles are coming out relative to your thread so that your stitch lays double nicely. And <clears throat> it's not a big deal, but if you find it not laying the way that you want it to, you may end up in the position where you've got to, uh, where you've got to pull one back and, and do it again. And, you know, do this as many times as you need to. Again, uh, you know, this is not part of the belt that anyone is ever gonna see, right? Nobody's gonna know except you. <clears throat> but that also means that you're gonna know. So do the best job that you can here. Um, Pretty simple stuff. <clears throat> a couple more stitches and we'll be able to trim this off and uh, finish it up. Oh. Lost track of myself while we were talking. All right, and on this last one, I am not going to, uh, I'm not gonna run them both through. I'm just gonna cut them off on the inside here. So, <clears throat> grab my X-Acto knife here. Uh, I'm a firm believer in the X-Acto number two. I use these things for everything. Just an outstanding choice for general workshop use. So there's that. All right, so, We've got our keeper, right? And it's this like lumpy round shape. Uh, what do we do about that? Well, first thing we see where we are on our loop stick. Slides on pretty easily. So um, I actually want it to be a little bit firmer than that. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is put a piece of leather between the loop stick and the loop and then force it over. What that's gonna do is tighten the loop down over the stick. Uh, you know, it's gonna increase the size a little bit, but that's not gonna matter terribly much in this case. Um, but as always, if you're unsatisfied with what you have, feel free to, uh, you know, remake it as necessary. Now to shape this loop, I've got one of my polished hammers. This is a uh, United Shoe Machine Model G. Uh, with a polished face. And I'm going to go around and form this to the loop, or form the loop around the stick. So now that that's formed, we're going to, uh, to clean up this, to clean up this crease a little bit. And this is where you get your, your really hard, shiny crease. You know, now that it's formed, it's, it's pretty easy to get to and you can really work it. <clears throat> so, um, I don't know how much I've got here as far as visibility, but that's what you're looking for. You want, you want that nice dark line, okay? You can go around the edges a little bit. <clears throat> but really at this point, you're just, you're working on details. So, you know, depending on the belt, depending on your customer, I mean, you get to decide, you know, how much time you want to spend on this detail work. And for certain projects, you know, it's definitely worth the time to do it. And for other projects, you know, you might get to a point where enough is enough. Now, the last thing to do here is to apply a diamond to the, uh, to the keeper. So I'm gonna index this stamp here. 
see where it falls. You know, honestly, that is probably about dead on where I want it to be. So <clears throat> in this case, I'm expecting a little bit of rebound. So I'm using a heavier maul, knowing that it's going to take more weight to drive that diamond in where it goes. <clears throat> right? And there we are. So we have a correct keeper. <clears throat> and if I can get up here where you can see it. Okay. Um, now, to finish this, you're going to leave this on the stick overnight to make sure that it has a chance to dry and harden over the loop. And then the last thing you're going to do is burnish the edges of the keeper again. And um, how you're going to do that, let me grab another keeper that I've got made already. <clears throat> how you're going to do that with this, see this loop is already hardened. Um, you can see actually the stitching really got smashed in the process of of getting it ready. But now that I've got this keeper, um, what you'll do is you'll just dampen an edge with a sponge again. And then instead of rubbing it on the edge of the table, you'll just hold your glove and you'll polish it like this. And you can wax it and continue to do that and work back and forth until you've got, you know, a dark glossy edge like you would want. But, um, that's really all you need to finish it. From here, you'll oil it. And after oiling, um, you're probably actually going to have to burnish it again. But after each step where that edge kind of fuzzes out, you've got to go back and correct it until you get it where it needs to be. And then once you've got that, you're good. So it uh, looks like that was about 25 minutes, including explanations. And if you're, um, you know, pretty adept at this, you're moving along. You know, it's it's a 10, maybe 15 minute thing if you really stretch it and it makes all the difference in how dressy, you know, a belt or a strap can look. Um, if you've got a little maker's mark or something, you can put your maker's mark here. Um, you can put something ornamental here. You don't have to include a stamp at all. You can just crease it. Um, so there's lots of cool stuff you can do. But the most important thing is that it's done technically correct. If you weren't going to crease it, you know, you would bevel top, bevel bottom burnish, uh, you know, and then form it over the stick. And then you would have a plain, uh, a plain loop done right. But anyway, that is, uh, is all there is to say about uh, loops. Thanks for stopping by again. And uh, I'm hoping to be doing more of these streams now that I've kind of got a grasp on, on how to get it out there. So uh, as always, if you can think of topics that you would like to see addressed, if there's, if there's stuff that you want to know, um, shoot me a message, uh, look me up on Instagram, whatever you need to do, and I'll help, uh, I'll help you help yourself. So thanks so much for stopping by and, uh, thank you for your support. I couldn't do what I do without you guys. So, uh, have an excellent day and we'll see you soon.